Yeah. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Apparently, uh, one plug for the entire system is not the best way to go, especially when the plug is worn out. Just over attrition, the thing fell out of the wall. So I tied it up. We should be good to go. Uh, you didn't miss anything because I decided to take a couple second player break. Uh, so he's still lining up on this jump shot. Let's see if we can get things uh, rolling. Maria and Scott are both gone. Oh, forfeit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he's a good there jumper. Here comes Maria. He's a good jumper. He's probably about 50 50 to make this, maybe. I mean. So it looks like all four players are back now, and he's going to be uh, lining up for this again now. I think he definitely plays this on the side, I think. Oh, what happened? We went right to it. So you've been watching me do that the whole time. Yeah, yeah I think he called it in a side pocket. No, oh, didn't get over the ball. I didn't get over it. There's, there's Maria's B player. Yeah. Let's see. So we got to get this here again. And I guess as long as I'm not doing stuff outside of there. If anybody in the chat just wants to confirm that we're back on and doing... Is there anybody in the chat? Oh, we got one viewer back. Hello, one viewer. Let us know if we're back. <laughs> uh, let's see. That'll build back up. We can go to YouTube and see if we're actually live. Oh, three viewers now. Seven. Somebody, seven. There we go. Somebody chime in. Let us know you can hear us. Tied up the outlet so that doesn't happen again. It was actually kind of funny because when we when I stepped out there to t talk to those guys, uh, Veronica Lyman comes up or Lyons comes up and she goes, "Is Campy Sport right that it's only one to nothing?" Yeah. And they're like, "Yeah." They all start laughing. She goes, well, I just wanted to make sure. All right, Al, thanks a lot. And JD Me Robot, is that what that is? Like, and so. Let's see. Once again, this is uh, Kendall Cook. I'm joined with Jeff Potts in the booth. We are watching this match for fourth place. And we got some of the final matches coming up too. Yeah, you guys stay tuned most of the day. There'll be uh, some good matches coming up. A lot of good teams left in this tournament. Is this the uh, first year that they did the um, the nine ball three man teams? Uh, I'm or, not sure. I don't think I've ever seen or heard of that event before. Let's see what we got going on over here with this the men's. Let's see they're done with that match. Yeah, so it looks like uh Nate Windham and his uh cousin that's only sixteen uh went on and won that match there too. Nice. Yeah, he plays good. He's Definitely does. Looks like, oh, okay. Thought maybe there was a problem there. Maria went over to say something to the tournament booth, but. I wish this CompuSport app would actually tell you what the scores of the matches were <laughs> without having to go into all, all the detail stuff. Yeah, it's tough. It's... Trying 
we get our tables to match a little better here. They're a little bit off in brightness. So sorry for all the color changes there, but can't help but do it live at the moment. It's a little closer in color than what they were. Yeah, that guy hit some balls hard on the break. Look at the size of them. Yeah. Derek's, Derek's a big boy. You got a lot Good to result. put behind it. Yeah. Well, and that's the truth too. You got to get a result. To, sometimes just hitting them hard doesn't doesn't do anything. That's In why fact, they, sometimes it makes it harder to make a ball. That's why they say the break shot's the most important part, probably the most important shot of the game. Win or lose on a good break shot. Well, I think everybody assumes that harder is better, and it isn't necessarily. It's the exact speed that the table requires for those balls to go in the hole. And some tables are slower hit. You know, some of them don't make anything if you drill it. You know. I'm not smart enough to know anything about rig and racks. I know they can do that too, but I've never done much of that. Yeah. So did you hear about the, a little off track, but did you hear about uh, the Moscone Cup now? Uh, it's going to be in Orlando, Florida this year. Yep, yep. And uh, Sky Woodward and Jason Shaw are going to be playing captains. They are, yep. Team, yeah, they're playing It's going to be interesting captains. to see how that works out with the point system and stuff. Oh. <laughs> I agree. They, uh, they uh, we were talking about Windows Open. They actually did an interview with uh, Sky and Jason this morning. Sure. And, uh. It's going to be kind of weird with that point system because if uh, Sky or Jason don't make the top three in points, they have to be one of the wild cards. Yeah. So then they only get one pick. It'll, it'll be interesting, though. Well, right. I mean, you got to stay stay up. Not that you're not going to play, but yeah. so that you don't aren't wasting a... They're, they're both just basically guaranteed a spot right now, so that just kind of eliminates what can be done with the other four. Yeah, it's kind of nice. We got to see Jeremy Jones while we were obviously doing that event, and uh, got talking to him. And him and Scott Frost both were going to get him uh, down to the Mad Apple. Uh, I don't know when yet, but both of them very interested. And, and when I was talking to Jeremy, Jeremy says, "Yeah, that's right. I got to get come and work with Mason too, because he's yeah. planning on coming to work with Mason. Yeah. Uh, Mason really this year wants to attack things again." And, yeah, he uh, Get his Mason kind of took off there for a little bit. He was going around playing in uh, some of these tournaments, and I know he got invited to a couple match room events, didn't he? Yeah, he. I mean, he's he played, you know, Worlds uh, two years in a row. He got invited to Great Britain and then uh, Poland. That's a that's an excellent experience. Yeah, I mean, one of 128 in the nation that get invited, you know. And a lot of people probably don't know, but Mason's very first state team tournament, he played with me. <laughs> Remember that? I, I remember that, yeah. He played with uh, you and uh, that's Bill back, that's, Grossberg. Yep. Bear, yep. It was back when uh, you uh, you won the magnet. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're making shirts out of there. He was young. Yeah, yeah. He was, I think he was yeah. only, what was he, 15? Maybe. 15? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. He was a great player back then. Yeah, I mean, he's really been working on his mental game, you know, and that type of thing. And I think, you know, that's, to watch these guys play, and they're just, it's just matter of fact. I mean, I. Honestly, I was surprised at how many balls they were missing yeah. <laughs> throughout pool. the weekend. Pool is a really tough game unless you're in that that top ten to be able to afford to travel around and or get sponsors. I think Mon or uh, Mason isn't he sponsored by Peach Hour? Yeah, he's got a few sponsors actually. Um, yeah. Obviously, Mad Apple being one of them also, and we try and help him where we can. Uh, but. I'm just happy to see that he's getting his stuff together. He's playing on three and three quarter inch uh, pockets on his diamond that he has. Uh, so even a little tighter than what Matchroom is. Uh, and he's running out there. You know, it's just, it's a different game. It changes the way that you hit the ball. Uh, the spins are different. Everything, you know, is a little bit tighter. One of the things that I noticed uh, while watching all weekend is, uh, so coping, uh, Chung, yep. when you watch him stroke, he when he sets his cue, he's literally about a half inch away from the cue ball every time. I mean, yeah. consistently a half inch. You know, most players, even the good players that I watch, are an inch to an inch and a half away from the cue ball when they're setting up. And if you think about that, you're extending past your natural sitting spot. 
So the closer you can get into that cue ball, the more control, the more consistency you're going to have. But the accuracy you know, of hitting the cue ball where you to want it to. Absolute control over your mechanics and your stroke in order to I've do got, that. That's probably one of my downfalls. I've got such a long bridge, but I just can't get away from it. Yeah. Been playing that way for so long. It's tough to, what do they say, teach an old dog new tricks? <laughs> yeah, just narrowing in. Oops, she's putting the balls on the wrong end. Break with 15 and hit them into the cue ball. I see uh, Mason also went back to normal size cues. He, he used did to, mostly. He yeah. used to play with a, like an eight foot shooting cue and a three foot break cue. <laughs> yeah, and he still, I think, has a slight extension in there to get it. So I think more people should have extensions in their cues. The cues that are designed are designed for people that are five foot eight. It's just the way it yeah. is because that's that's where the average height of the person was when they were developing the game and creating the equipment and everything else. You know, ideally, if your cue doesn't come up to minimally the bottom of your chin, but I like to see it up to about your mouth, that's about the height that you need uh, to be able to do the proper mechanics. And I think anything shorter than that on people, you're making compromises within your mechanics. I know when Dave builds his cues on, I'm talking about Dave Coles. Yep. Um, his, all his cues are 60 inch cues. 60, yeah. Yeah, he he always makes them 60 inches. He, right. Th other than the standard 58 that you normally Just, are. You look at a guy like Derek. Derek's like 6'4". Yeah. Right? And if he's playing with that standard length cue, it's like playing with a Q-tip. He can't even get in, or a toothpick, you know, you can't even get in the right mechanical position to get a good function on it you know so when when you play are you a fan of having the the extension in between the shaft and the butt or do you like to yeah the butt i think extension? the balance stays better yeah i think when you put it in the middle your your balance doesn't change much i have, I have a butt extension for mine but i just yeah. i don't ever put one in the middle but i just feel like the butt extensions it kind of gives me a back-ended heavy cue you know it, no matter how light they make them because everybody makes a really light weight Butt extension, you know. What are you going to teach me how Kurt's to hit, gonna, Jeff? Kurt's going to teach you. What are you going to teach me, Kurt? Everything. <clears throat> Here, we'll just do it that way for now. I just can't make changes on the fly, but that way at least we can see what's going on a little better until I get my answer here. It looks like we got a score line of two to one. Emery and them guys going to four. Maria and Scott going to five. I noticed that they uh, switched this up and separated this into two divisions this year. I think Kurt's just trying to talk crap in the uh, chat here. I know Jeff said the reason that one of the reasons they split this up was uh, they eliminate the five three races, but I'm not sure. If that was an issue. All right, so it looks like they took stripes here. This 15 ball goes, they're not in bad shape. This looks like it's pretty tight. He's gonna try to shoot it though. Go by there. Yeah, you overcut that just a little bit. Yeah, he had a little more room than I thought he did.
Well, here is another scenario too where their Maria's and Scott's balls are just not in the best of positions. I guess if they can get on that seven ball down here, they can probably play that off the nine ball and that'll open up the pocket for the eight. Let's see what the plan is going to be. <laughs> so I didn't see that, uh, that it does w WSPA today. Uh, did they have a pro player here for the team event, or? No, I don't think they did, no. No, they didn't get one. I don't think they've done that for a few years, have they? Actually, they had um, they had that Christina. Um, she's, like, ranked number four on the WPVA right now. She was at singles there. And Tyler and Margaret came up there for a little bit at singles. Okay. I don't think Tyler and Margaret were there for... Um, Not very long. Yeah. No, they were just promoting those training balls. Yeah, they were selling. They had a booth. Yeah. Christina was doing challenge matches against people, though. I can't remember what her last name is. It's like Benton. check or something like yeah, that. Right? She just got second uh, in Fairfield, Ohio tournament. She lost to that hung. Seems like the women's pro events are starting to come back a little bit more too. You got a lot of younger players, Savannah Easton coming up and in, in those events and Yeah, I'm excited. I'm hoping we can work something out. Man, that girl that girl's got the sponsors. Have you ever seen her list of sponsors? Yeah. Yeah, it's Man, impressive. She's got actually. like twenty five, twenty six sponsors listed on her uh Facebook page. Yeah, she's uh she's got quite a bit going on. I'm gonna fix our screen here. You guys are gonna get to watch me do it, but it is what it is. <laughs> I get you a shot on that five ball. You hit that pretty good. You got that five ball out of there. You got it in the side pocket now for Maria. Still going to have to address that eight ball a little bit. tell you maria uh and i'm got to be careful here because we're down technically by three games if you want to be technical yeah because if i mean if they get to four they can only they can only really give up one more game yeah got to pretty much beat them four to one from here to win the match You guys do a lot of Q repair over at the Mad Apple too, then? Oh, yeah. yeah. A ton, actually. MH is in charge of most of that. Yeah, I heard he does a pretty good job when he's doing tips and stuff. Yeah, he does, yeah. Sure. Oh, that's a good shot uh, there. Honestly, it's a tough, it's a tough deal because there's about 100 other things that probably make more money that he could be doing. Yeah. But it's important to do service work for your players, you know. I mean, he can't can't run a hall like that and not have some service for them you know what i mean yeah. we actually haven't done q repair since we had the fire yeah dave's 
Well, it's tough. I'm sure yet. people are looking for it, but it's just the val the amount of money you make doing it. It's a lot of work, you know. I mean, for for what it is, you know, everybody thinks seventy bucks for a tip is a lot of money, but I mean, how much do you make an hour now? You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> By the time you pay the bills, you know, seventy bucks is barely barely cutting. Her. Yeah, especially when most of your tips now, even on Amazon, are $23, $24 a piece just for you to buy one. Yeah. So, so I'm not... I'm, and not everybody can just jump on a lathe and put a tip on a queue either. That's right. Yeah, so yeah there's like a lot of technique to it. I mean, it's not brain surgery. It's like anything. You know, you get better at it. Well, it looks like they're going to get... Uh, I think she came out of that pretty good. good the right angle to get on the one ball and everything. Yeah, the eight could be a little unfortunate where the eight ended because now he's got to try and. I think he goes forward here. I feel I like. No, I feel like he's going to hit the eight ball if he does that. I think he's got to draw him between the rail and the eleven, don't he? Yeah, probably right. Yeah. And then I'm not sure if he does have enough angle to stun it over that far. You know, maybe. No, he looks like he's landing something up. He must have. It looks like he's got more angle than what it does. Maybe. Yeah. He must be almost straight in if he's looking to go up that way. If you look at the overhead, he looks like he's got a back cut to it, but it's just in the wrong spot, I think. I think if you play the tangent line, you could sneak between the 8 and the 11, but that's tight. You touch either one of those and you're in trouble. So it does look like he's going to go forward. I think he's going to get too close to it. Yeah, too yeah, straight. He's gonna have to it. bump it. Look at this shot. He's gonna get a little love. <laughs> a little rub there. Yeah. Just right. Maria should have no problem getting this under control. She's got every pocket except for the one the nine's hanging in to I think it goes by the fifteen ball either to. on the top left. Anything on the left side of the table that she he should have a shot. Uh oh. Oh no, we got Ray's in here stalking us now. Nobody but the people's evil. champ. The people's champ joining us in the booth just for a second. Uh, <laughs> I took you off right away. We didn't want to ugly the place up too bad. Did you guys win your match over there? Three of us. Did you guys win your match over there? You guys won it all? Oh, there you go. Went out on top of the bottom. Nice work, Ray. Ray, Ray. The, Ray the people's <laughs> champ, won the second chance Scotch Devils. Yeah. Oh, she They're, hit that about perfect. Uh, this match here has been a struggle, kind of. That's two safety games. It's been, it's been a long match so far. I think the first game lasts about 45 minutes. What are you talking about? It's only been an hour and a half, and it's two to two. <laughs> I don't know if I could make a game of eight ball last 45 minutes if I <laughs> intentionally was trying to make it last 45 minutes. You'd almost get bored and just start firing at stuff. Well, that's just my get it problem. Over and get on to the next right. one, right? That's how I feel. All right, so that's going to tie it up at two to two. Uh, obviously, Maria and Scott have to go to uh, five, where uh, Cara and uh, yeah, so they're Derek actually are they're actually to four. If you want to get technical, they're actually still trailing by a game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That handicap can come into play a lot if you lose the first or second games, and then I mean you're tight where you can't make any mistakes. Here, in fact, I'm gonna let uh, Mr. Skin and Door come on over and have a seat and uh, take my spot while I take a stretch. You get by so, there, Ray. Welcome, Mr. Ray, into the booth. Yeah. Mic'd up. All right. <laughs> Can you hear me, chat room? 
Stand up. This is the Scotch Doubles Championships. Now we finally got rid of Kendall. Now it's just me and Potts in the booth. We can we can get real now. We can talk openly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you really think? This could get brutal. <laughs> These guys here, the loser play, takes fourth place. Winner goes on to play for third place. And I think Justin, or not Justin, um, who was on the hot seat again? Um, oh, it's uh, Bonnie Hunkins and uh, Nick. Solid team. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Scotch is crazy. It's, uh, what's it's up, chat room? <laughs> Kurt Elliott said, Tails, where you at, Kurt? <laughs> Come on up. He'll be here tomorrow. Oh, I gotta work. I gotta work. I'm leaving tomorrow. Um, you're not. You're not playing team then, huh? No, no. Yeah. Now I work at the only poker room in the state of Wisconsin. Over there at uh, Oneida, then. Oneida. Yeah. We just won the award for the best poker room in the state of Wisconsin. Yeah. Being the only one, right? 2023. We're looking pretty good for 2024, too. Yeah. <laughs> they're actually uh, they're building a big Vegas Hard Rock casino right off the Rockford exit now. Are they? I heard. They, I, they I've are, always heard about stuff out there, right out there. Yeah. They, they put up a makeshift casino in one of the little mini malls, and then uh, it's going up pretty quick. It's supposed to open up in the summer of 24. Oh, nice. It's supposed to be just like um, Hard Rock out in Vegas. <clears throat> what up, Al Holden? Kurt, there's no reason to laugh. You can you can leave and you could be here in three hours. I'll be here. I actually might even stay overnight, so I'm going to probably be – I might go to sleep soon, and I just uh, – when you get done playing – did you play scotch? Yeah. So when you get done playing scotch, this is what <clears throat> I wanted to talk to somebody about. Uh, so yeah, you're here. Chat room, help me. I need therapy. Wait. So I don't play much scotch, and there's a reason why, and it's really because of what I'm feeling today. Basically, when you play scotch doubles, you are handcuffed to another human mind. Yeah. For a very, very <clears throat> long time, and it's not just pool. It's you know, it's also like patterns and run. But it's also like just thinking about, like, you know, where do you sit down, or like, like all every choice a, a human makes throughout the day. Yeah. But when you're when you're that close and tied to somebody for a day or two or three, it's just amazing to me to see the differences. Where I'm just like, yeah, it's obvious. I'm, I bought a plate of food to eat. I'm gonna sit at the table by where I bought it. There's a table there. There's a chair there. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to eat. But then my Scotch doubles partner will, like, go across the room <laughs> and sit in a chair and start eating. I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, well, if you put this chair over here and you, rig, you know, angle the case right and, and, and twist your leg over your knee, it's kind of like a table. And then, look, I'm eating. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. It is kind of like a table. Yeah. Like, I, I, you, you got there. But I don't, I could never have fathomed that this is how you got there. And that's Scotch Doubles. Yeah. Well, Scotch Doubles is tricky, too. You know I mean, you got the chemistry. You're going to run patterns a lot different. Yeah. You're going to do a lot of stuff a lot different. Like you said, you're going to eat here. She's going to eat there. And uh, I've noticed a lot this weekend, even when I was playing with my partner, um, and he plays pretty good. Um the patterns that I would run if I was shooting singles are like totally different and it's, it's harder. It's a lot harder, but it is my favorite game. I've actually won the, the men's men's scotch doubles. I've won it four times with three different partners. Um, it's actually been one of my go-to events, I guess. Three different partners. Wow. Yeah. I actually, I actually won it with my son, Blake Waldo. That was probably the biggest achievement tournament that I'll ever win. Awesome. To build a, well, you know, you used to play a lot with your dad and stuff. It's just, you, you just can't uh, get away from that. And we won a big tournament. I got the plaque yeah. in my room. I'll never, like, it's one of my prized possessions. Yeah. yeah, it's 
for sure. And I don't remember the money. I don't remember. I just remember I played with my dad. We didn't dog it. It was a lot of good teams there. The the money means nothing when you get a chance to play father son and stuff like that. Oh my god, it's unbelievable. You guys are lucky. I'm jealous, man. When I see that too, it's it's great to see. I have brothers and I have you know siblings and and uh, nieces nephews. Nobody plays pool. It was literally just me and my dad. Like I have a pretty big family, and so. I, I actually got another family member that's coming up pretty fast too. Um, um, uh, I don't know if you heard of Jay Peters before, but uh, yeah. he's my cousin actually, and uh, I never even knew he played pool until uh, about a year and a half ago. I walked into Sus uh, Sunset Bowl and he's in there for a tournament. My aunt and uncle's there too. I'm like, wow. So yeah, and he's coming up uh, the ranks pretty quick. He's winning a lot of tournaments. He's only been playing. About three years. And uh, he's going to be on the Masters list next year already. So it looks like she's got a jump shot here. Jumper. Are you a fan of the jump cues, Ray? Ha, I I grew up with them. It's it's just in time where it's not it wasn't a new thing to me, so I don't think anything about it. It's like the internet kind of. Yeah. For the, for, I mean, I'm pre-internet. But if you imagine if you're a kid with the internet, it's like you don't think about I can't get by without it <laughs> can't imagine what it's like before that yeah you guys had to remember phone numbers <laughs> like um but yeah so so my favorite pool commentator of all time is jimmy mattia if you're familiar with him he's a, he's a great player i don't think i ever heard him commentate though he was a oh uh, he was god. an awesome player well oh, if you ever heard she, him commentate oh my you would god know. <laughs> she hit that so good almost it, cue ball even rolled forward to get in that gap and just rolled just a little bit more on her. Looks like he's going to probably have to jump this one, too. Jump to a jump. Um, he yeah, so he, Jin Matai hates jump cues. Like, oh. And he will go on and on and, and just, uh, you know, probably something like how Earl hates jump cues. Yeah. Um, Earl Earl talks about it all the time, but he'll pull the jump cue out of his bag in oh, a minute yeah. if he has to. And Jimmy won't. Jimmy's a, Jimmy's about it. Like he's that's what it is. When you hear people talking about like <laughs> policy and what doesn't matter what the topic is, and then all of a sudden like you see them like really like benefiting from it too. Like no, if you're really about that life, you don't have to take that check. You don't have to take that benefit. You don't have to pull out that jump cue. Like that's. That I respect that. I, I I might still really strongly disagree with you, but you have earned my respect. Yeah. Yeah, I go both ways on the jump cue. I mean, I think I kicked the balls a lot better when I was younger than I do now, because you don't have to kick them so much anymore. But other than that, I don't mind the jump cues. A lot of people hate them. God, he almost spun, spun that, that really good. I was gonna say I <laughs> I know him. He's a he's a good jump shot. Yeah, I'm not I'm too familiar surprised. with him. Um. I do know her a little bit. I know she won this event before with Justin Allenthal. I am felt. Well, and that actually, brings to mind. And the, actually, Justin's in the hot seat of the men's doubles. Oh, with, he is. With Russ Castro. Nice. That's a good team. Yeah. Justin's the same way. I think he's he's won this t tournament a couple times with um uh Pam. They used to play a lot together. Well, see Scott and Maria's gotta get out here. They can't afford to go to let these guys get another game or put them on the hill. They've got the perfect opportunity. There ain't nothing tied up. Yeah, Derek uh, plays a lot. Derek Tauschek plays a lot in Kiwani. Um, whenever I go up those neck of the woods, I see him always. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him play before besides right now. He made a in game number two. Um, Scott played safe on him. He made a heck of a bank shot. Kind of had to hit the replay like a couple times on you going to keep everybody oh, keep seeing yeah. it. It was F5, F5. it was solid shot, solid shot.
Well, if Wolmer is in the chat room. He says, Cripes. Kurt Elliott says, I go both ways, Jeff Potts. I have no idea what he's talking about. Wombra, looks like this is what I usually leave my opponent, but I'm oh. happy with that level. Is the top view's lagging? Well, Al, I don't think it really, it doesn't need to be a shot clock. The The games so far, the balls have been so funny. They were getting in a safety game, and I mean, any any mistake right now, you know, a match two to two, any mistake right now could cost them the, the whole match. I mean, it's a short race from here. I don't think any of the players are playing slow. Slow play is, uh, well, here's the thing. I, I I never had a problem with slow play. I mean, obviously, everybody wants to be, uh, you know, Vince from The Color of Money. Right around the table, spiking in balls, yeah. laughing. But, but that's, there's like one in a billion people can actually play pool like that. Um, probably Josh Filler being one of them, best filler. filler. Sure, Mitch Ellerman. I, I got a couple of guys come to mind. Um, but Jimmy Mattia actually used to play like that. Um, the the real thing is, is it intentional? Do you ever think anybody's intentionally like taking an extra two minutes to look at something when they're they're just trying to leave you in your seat? And if you think somebody's doing that, now I have a problem. Now we got problems. So, and I almost never think that that's the case. So here's my here's here's my theory on that, and I and I love this kid to death, and he knows it. Billy Lassie. He okay. he's probably one of the slower tournament players, but do, I don't know if you know this. You know, out in Vegas for the BCA that he's won the speed pool competition out there twice. No, I didn't know that. He, he has. Yeah, he's uh, out at BCA Nationals. He's won speed pool out there twice. And he and he plays. I don't know if you ever had a chance to play Billy or not, but oh yeah, he's not moving around very great quick. Player. He he's always a great, a great, player. great player. He plays slow. He likes the safety break and eight ball, especially when it gets to a close match. Um, because he and he should because he he has more moves than Jello. Yeah, he can he can maneuver. But but I heard when he was younger, he used to play a lot faster. He did a lot faster, and yeah. he played great still. Um. But you know something happened, slowed him down. I heard the same thing about Buddy Hall. I heard he 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 used to play lightning like lightning fast and. Yeah, I don't. I didn't see much of Bill, Buddy play a couple matches on YouTube every once in a while. But it was always it was um, he was already in his older ages. I heard he was a solid solid player when he was younger. <clears throat> that was a sweet shot. Yeah. From Marijuana. Looks like they shouldn't have any problems going up three to two here. So how do you like to hit this ball? You like to roll this with some high or you like to kind of stun follow? It's kind of deceiving because it looks like he's got an angle that he can shift over to the left a little bit, but he might be straight in. Uh, I think it's straight. See, I like to I would follow this down and probably play it in the side pocket. Oh, see there we go. So now we're talking about Scotch doubles. I'm sitting in the chair. You're thinking about following forward for the side, which is fine. But, like, my mind is, like, I want to move this cue ball as less as possible. Yeah, I hear where you're coming from there. I just, um. um and the stun, the Kurt Elliott's in the chat room. He's saying stun follow. Yeah. I, and, and I agree with both of you that it, it's probably shot. See, he did roll follow. Okay. Yeah. See, yeah. now that's. Now, watch, watch. The reason I said that was because it was just a hair not straight. Where if you yeah. roll follow, if you roll follow like I wanted to, these tables were playing quick, and now you're going to leave your opponent on the 50-yard line. Yeah. But you're trying to get perfect, and he, what did he, he tried to do the roll follow? Yeah, he didn't, follow, uh, right? he didn't stun that ball at all. He did not all. stun it. And he, it looked and like he kind of did like a check bottom on it. He tried to, uh, and so he the, just missed the ball. The advantage of the stun follow is you, 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 you keep your accuracy for the center of the pocket. Yeah. When you start rolling balls, you know, things happen. But it's harder to stun follow. It's just harder to do. Like, you have to practice that shot and, and uh, you know, have to know how yeah. to hit that ball. I I spin balls and roll them pretty good. I, I usually don't hit stuff very hard, um, especially on the diamonds. That was crazy. Yeah. We talked about one shot that was relatively straight in, 
stop, stop, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And three people chimed in. Three people hit it three different ways. And the player, who's a great player, uh, just, what do you call that? What's that? Okay, wait. Well, this, is gonna be, this is going to be a tricky shape come. here. How are you hitting this? I'm so I'm hitting this. You almost got to go try to go three, four rails with this, don't you? With a yeah. little inside, high, high inside, three rails, and try to get the cue ball about shoot it in the same where you pocket. are right now. Yeah, same shoot pocket. Like, shoot this ball. Like one pocket. Yeah. You try to hold this. Shit. I don't think you can hold this. Even which maybe you can. It's I, a, a, to, on, the, it. on the monitor. It looks a little steep, but you might be able to spin into it. Yeah, but I don't no. like that either. Uh, I'm I'm hitting this high inside. Trying to draw, try draw, drawing out two rails. That's even a tough shot when that ball's so close to the rail. You're gonna lose that ball fast. He's definitely hitting it with high left. Kinda and you tough. gotta hit. You gotta fire this. You don't want to under hit it. Yeah. You can over hit it and still be fine, but don't under hit it. That's, yeah, she under hit like, that. Like She's gonna scratch. Oh, well, she got a lot. She got a lot more left on there than she needed. And that, and if you under hit it, that spin. E even can the catch. angle and where that ball was, it's, it you could probably almost get there with almost just a high center ball, but maybe just a, you know like a half a tip of left, maybe. So it looks like Marie and Scott are gonna escape the mistake. Unreal, yeah. Those are the games that you just can't believe. Like, oh man! At the end of the us. tournament, you sit there and you look back, and it's like this. You can play the best tournament you ever shot in the world. You can have one <laughs> shot you're going to remember your whole life in that tournament that you did wrong. I don't know if she overran this. Oh, well, maybe not. No, Maria's. Maria's the one constant that I've seen in this match. She is just parking the cue ball, center pocket with the object ball. Yeah, Maria always plays. She's a solid player. Owns the Rock Bar and Grill in Sun Prairie. Her and her husband, Tom. So there you have it. Three to two to Maria and Scott McFarland. Race to two. Race to two now for the to move on. Pretty hard to imagine you can play two hours and you're only five games into the match. Those two first two games were brutal. Well, maybe that's why they made us wake up at 9 a.m. Yeah. Just, just in case. Because, like, you got a ton of time here. It's not like when it gets weird is when it's, like, the end of the night, uh, you know, the match is scheduled at 11, and it's, like, still it's past midnight, and you're still waiting for a match to finish to, to, to start your match. Like these, where there's only a couple teams left in the whole tournament, you could take take as long as you want. I'm I do not mind. I got, I'm matter of fact, I'm all over here on the side hitting balls, getting stronger. You're you're in, you're in trouble. Yeah. This is not going to help you in the next match. No. You're getting these one of these slug fests. It's hard to it's it's great hey, to win them. This this match right here is going to be draining on both teams. <clears throat> totally. You probably got to see a lot of uh, different players. You used to live out in Vegas out there and play a lot of grips, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you like I, that better out there than here? Or are you glad you came back to Wisconsin? I played at grips so long. I played at grips before it was grips. Um, it used to be called pool sharks. Yeah, I, I remember that. I've been out there a couple of times. When we, we usually go out for BNEA for Vegas and go there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Vegas and Wisconsin are different. Um, Wisconsin, you gotta travel a little bit. Um, in Vegas, like everything in this whole state, pretty much is all in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, that's one of the main differences. Um, they play a lot more nine ball out there. There, and Wisconsin plays a lot more eight ball. Um, I mean, obviously the weather. That, that's a that's a real different concept when you go to different places like that of how the game's different in all places you know like i before i moved up to beloit i barely played any nine ball 
and now everything basically in Beloit is everybody wants to play nine ball. Oh. They don't they don't play eight ball. I mean they do, but not as much. And like even like big table, small table, I mean I never had a big table where I was growing up, you know, unless I drove two hours. So everything I've ever played was bar table. Are you are you a big table player too? I like the big table. Um most tournaments are not are on the bar table. Like most of the tournaments I'm looking at with big money added. Um so long ago I started practicing more on the bar table than I did on the big table. Um you know, hanging out pool sharks and griffs, they'd have uh they'd have a day rate. You could play all day and uh play all day and uh you know, you could, there's an old this old guy used to always want to play straight pool. I was that's where I I played a lot of straight pool. I guess just one old guy on a big table. And um Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. But if I'm if I'm getting ready for a tournament, if I'm gonna put in some like serious, like deliberate practice, I wanna play the tournament. I wanna play is it on seven footers? I wanna play on seven footers. Are they using the red circle cue ball? I wanna use the red circle cue ball. Yeah. Um I want to try to recreate all the conditions to so, reduce all so, the variables. So that's interesting how you said that because there's a lot of players that'll say, I'm going to practice on a big table no matter what table I'm playing on. So you but you think that playing, if you're going to play a bar table tournament, you want to play a bar table or a big table, you want to play a big table. Absolutely. So, yeah. I strongly disagree with them. But they are about it that life and so i respect them because they will stay on that big table mm -hmm. and then come over and play me in a, in a bar table tournament and over and overrule the cue ball i the best is when you when you play snooker guys when you play you ever play like uh guys from europe yeah you play these people who are playing on these 10 wherever they are 12 foot tables they're, and their lights out they never they never miss a pot jeff Potts. they never miss a pot they call it instead of uh making a ball they call it pot yeah you play these guys in like any American game, really eight ball, nine ball. They totally disrespect the break. They can't. It's just bewildering to them that the break shot is a meaningful shot. Oh, it's so important. And I can't tell you how many times, at least three off the top of my head, where I played some like brilliant snooker player, and he couldn't beat me, and he didn't know why. And the reason is because he just he just had, had no. Uh, had no respect for the break shot. Well, he figured it out. They figured it out. But for a while there, that's my favorite, is when they don't know the game. They don't play the game. They don't play the game on the game on the on the proper table with the proper cue ball. That I think I think you're in trouble. Yeah. So Maria hit that combo on that shot there. She didn't hit it very good. She just got all the way down there on the rail. Looks like he might have got fortunate though that one ball is gonna make that pocket huge. Let's see how this turns out. Yeah, that four might even help it. It's almost like having two pockets there, right? Yeah, he hits his center shot. pocket without even touching either one. That's a great shot. So here, you, you like the 11 right now on the side? Yeah, I think you almost have to, don't you? Yeah. I don't think it's, it's going to be tough to get back on it. I mean, what do you get? It. I mean, you hit that. If you cut the, what is that, 10 ball up there in the corner? Yeah. You hit that two ball, you, you don't have to get a shot. Also, the 10 ball looks like you might have to go real first off the five. So shooting the 11 side first gives you – puts you on the right side of that ball. Because yeah. right now you're kind of on the wrong side for that shot. So just probably roll that cue ball forward about three, four inches. and Roll forward. I think Kurt Elliott might stun forward on this shot. No. No. <laughs> he, he probably would, yeah. <laughs> like I said, I'm, I'm all for rolling balls. She might be. She looks like she's looking at playing it now. I don't see what the benefit of this is. I don't think you're going to get much better on that 11 ball, are you, Ray? Kurt Elliott's jacking up and drawing into the 10 and breaking it open. He's a donkey. <laughs> Uh no I like I like the eleven I like you said just roll up so because you right now you're on the wrong side unless that ten goes which I don't think it does 
but it looks like she thinks it does. So if it goes, go ahead and shoot it if you want. But yeah, you're not going to get much better on this 11 than you are right now. But I think the 11's a bigger problem than the 10. See, this is what I mean. You're going to go into that two ball, and now look what that two ball did. Wow. Now that it gave you more problems now. That was a really cool shot, actually. So she blocked the pocket, which is kind of natural to, to set up the 5-10 combo to the hole. But then she bumped the two, which sets up the solid stripe combo to the other corner pocket. You like playing safe right here right now? Shooting that 213 in, try to get down to that bottom rail down by the eight. Well, so, yeah, so solids ain't running out. Um, and so what's the saying? It's don't, an eight ball, don't make, if you can't make them, what is it? It's something in rhyming. It's like, don't make one ball till you can make them all. Yeah. Like so making that ball right there does nothing for you. Unless you're going to run out. Like, how are you going to run out from here? Um, so I would have made either one of those combos for a shot. I think you got to get one of them out of there at least, yeah. Where basically whichever one you can use to, to put the cue ball in a bad spot. I think best strategy for being a solid would have been shoot that 510 just because there's really not a breakout ball for the 13 for them. You can still stay in control of that game. I mean, you got basically one shot at a breakout with the, just at the 12 ball there in about the center of the table. Yeah. But other than that, you don't really have a breakout for that. I kind of like this, actually. So speed this four to the hole, which uh, if you miss it, hopefully it stays right there. Are you drawn into that combo there, or are you just... I... No. If she makes it, no. I don't see her getting a shot. Yes. I'd almost rather prefer to miss this shot, overcut it a little bit, and leave it in front of the thirteen. Just there. like, it's just gonna like line so. Up perfect. Now, that's how. That's that's the pro side. She missed it on the pro side. Yeah, she's a player. You almost got to think Solids is pretty much in control of this game right now. Let's see what happens. Well, um. He's got What's he's got kind right of now? he's got kind of a couple of choices. He either shoots that combo, gets it out of there, or he can shoot that fourteen ball in the corner with some high and probably break that thirteen out. You got, he's got a lot the of angle to do here. that. Yeah, I think he's got the angle. He could break it out with the fourteen right now. You got the angle with the fourteen with the twelve if you want. You can just tap that thirteen out of there, leave the cue ball on the bottom rail. They ain't out. Yeah. And, and um, you got a lot of choices here. And usually, sometimes that's not good. Usually that's not good. Like, you, you ever walk into a ice cream shop? Yeah. 31 flavors? And you want 20 of them? And you walk out, and you're, all you're doing is regretting, man, I, I, maybe I should have got that other one, or, or there's two other ones that I – but if you walk into the same ice cream shop and all there is is vanilla and, and chocolate, yeah, you're walking out, you're happy with your selection. You're much you're you're happier than a pig and shit. <laughs> you're much more happier than you were. <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he hit that good. He went for the went for the breakout. Uh hit it good. No no reward. <clears throat> now now what do you play safe into the thirteen four and try to leave the yep. thirteen in front of the six? Exactly. Yeah, that's a two, probably a two. Shoot the 13-4 combo, leave the 13 by the hole, call a safe, and if they get out from there. <clears throat> now the advantage went right back to the stripes again. Scheme's like changed right there. She hit it real good. Mm. I'm trying to see if that goes if you could hit if you could get to hit that two does 13 go i don't think so i think what maybe the shot might be here is shoot the 510 in and try to get on the bottom of the six put a little spin that could oh, be yeah. an option yeah just over there you could freeze up on the back side of the 11 just it's about dominating that hole 
And, and really, you don't want to give him a first easy <laughs> shot for a breakout swing at that 13. You get him anywhere around that 6 or 11 there. There's no real, the 11's really got no pocket except for the side. As long as you stay above it. Be curious to know if that two thirteen does go like you said, though. It it matters actually a lot. It does it matter a lot. I don't think it goes, but because you don't want to leave him up there and him may be able to cut that eleven ball into that. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm probably doing here? I mean, you got to get rid of that strike eventually. Like, you might as well get rid of it now. I don't know what you're waiting for before. Shoot that 5-10 combo. Dominate that hole with the 5. Put the cue ball where you want. Um, I think it's just kind of natural to come on the short side, hopefully freeze up on the 11. Um, you got to get it out of there. I mean, you're, you're leaving him way too many options with it like that. He can combo that 11 into them balls. He can shoot the 11, break it out. It's kind of like leaving your king in line exactly. of a bishop. Even though there's a blocker, you got a pawn on the way, but you're, that bishop's just on the line of your king. You don't want to stay because now later on in the game, now now you can't move that pawn. a lot more scenarios come up in this match in these first five games than six games actually that I've seen in a match in a long time. Seems like every one of these games are just switching back and forth so who's got the upper hand and he looks like he's going to shoot this 11 off the 6. I don't know if I like that. Yeah, he. I don't like it either at all. Oh. Um... Yeah, if you were going to do that, you, you just got to shoot the 5-10. Cutting that 7 ball, you don't gain nothing by doing that. I think you only really helped out the stripes by shooting that shot. But Because let's be in all reality, now you locked your 7 ball up too. I was going to say, I don't like where the 7 ended up. I'd like to know where he was trying to leave the 7. Yeah, I don't. Because you want to... If you're not leaving the cue ball in a s desired spot, you want to at least reposition the six or the seven. Those are your soldiers. Yeah, he he looked like he was shooting, trying to shoot that seven into the five ten, but that did that didn't make much sense. I I would be curious what he was trying there too. I mean, if you're if you're trying that shot, you might as well just shoot the five ten, right? How about right now? What's what's the shot now? This is. I can't tell if that eleven ball goes through there or not. I would say no. Let's say it doesn't go through. What do you shoot? Safe on the bottom of the 13. Oh, okay. Kick shot. Hit uh, you could the go off the side of the 12 and try to come underneath it, maybe. Uh, no, I like the kick, actually. Because then you create oh, yeah, separation. That's, yeah, that's you leave a good the two on too. the rail. You got the seven on the rail, too. Yeah, separate that two off of there. I don't think Scott will shoot that shot, but Scott is, See, Scott is a goal for a player. Now imagine we're Scotch doubles partners. And we call a timeout, and you said, yeah, get to the bottom of the 13. And I go, oh, a kick shot? And you're like, no, you were thinking of something else. Neither one of us were thinking about yeah. that. Yeah, well, look at this shot. That's pretty strong. I don't love the reward there, though. No. Like, he hit it, he hit it good. He got pretty much what he wanted. Still uh, got that problem up top. Opening that I helps think them more than it hurt, helps you. I think you're right to let 11 ball must not pass that ball. Otherwise, he shoots it, right? Yeah. Now you got to have Marina come in here and clean up your mess. She's going to cut this 13 ball in, pop the 5, make it, leave you perfect on the 11, and you're out. If you look at it over here on this on this monitor here, Ray, I think if, if she gets out here, he, they can make that ball. I think that ball goes. Oh, just make the 11 or the 10 clean? Yeah. yeah. And then they'd have the 11 over in the other pocket. Yeah, even looking on the table, there's a lot bigger gap out there than what it looks like on the monitor. So, yeah, if she can get out of this shot right here without touching that cue ball, which I think she will, 
they can make that ball and get out here. Okay. So that the, so then that makes that last shot a lot better. Like I didn't I didn't think of that ten going as clean. Yeah, I, I didn't either until eye. I actually looked over here at this side of the monitor. Yeah, I'm like, look at oh. the bird's eye. I'm like maybe that goes. It's it's a lot fuller pocket, and obviously it leads right into the eleven. All you gotta do is basically make this a little bit outside. Whoa, she's loading up inside. It looks like uh, Kurt Elliott is tra trying to challenge you to some chess. Are you a chess player, Ray? I love chess. He says, yeah, he goes, I think you and I are the only chess players. Uh, is she going to get a little love there? I don't think so. So she lined up playing that with inside, which I didn't love. I think um, she could have hit that with left hand spin and come off two rails and <clears> miss that ball. Definitely I would have played with outside left hand spin. Um. <coughs> well, Jesse Hughes plays chess. Well, there you go, Ray. If uh, pool falls through, looks like there's some chess action going on. <laughs> I I uh I once um so I was playing poker once in Las Vegas, and you run into all spices of life on a poker table, just like in a pool hall. And um, there's a guy named Hasim Rahman. He was the world heavyweight boxing champion. He knocked out Lennox Lewis. Yes. Um, and then he got knocked out like a year later by Lennox Lewis. But, but for a short time, he was the, the, rock, the rock, was his nickname. And uh, he played poker at the Palms, which is where I like to play. Anyways, he this guy would literally play people hundred dollar games of chess all day and i guess i don't know if he was a master or grandmaster or whatever he was pretty good but the, the, here's the problem with chess though it's not like pool it's really not like like nine ball pool or poker or anything it's hard to find a good matchup yeah. it's, it's very very likely that one person is just stone cold stealing every single game they're gonna win they, they won two in a row after they won two in a row they're it's pretty likely that they're going to win 20 in a row or 49 out of 50. Like, it's it's just hard to find a, an actual good action match, which if you can find it, yeah, I'll, I'll play chess all day, all night. Um, so I think Scott hit a halfway decent safety here. Can't tell if she's now not froze on that ball. I think the play here is probably come off. One rail down here by this two ball. Just don't leave him that ten ball, right? Yep. You leave him that ten ball and you're doomed. I think you can live the fight another day as long as they can't see that ten. Yep, anywhere down here is fine. Uh -huh. you're gonna, you got the seven blocking you. Yeah, I mean, you could try and spin and try, try and get perfectly behind the two or jacked up over the two. That's probably what I'm trying to do. I think do. he put a scratch and ball doing that. I think he just concentrated on getting anywhere over in this area. And I think she hit that perfect. Ooh, nice. I didn't see that part, too. And you could, you're pushing the six over in the line. That was a good shot. Rain. So there could be some scenarios here. I don't know. I think Maria's going to obviously have to play safe off the 11 somehow. And if she banks that 11 ball out of there, I think then they probably just pocket that 10 ball with a 5 and get a safe on them maybe. But I guess it all depends on where she's going to put this ball. I'm playing this bank. You going to play a shot? I'm playing the bank with with inside. Uh, kind of pocket speed. Just leaving Man, where they put that 6 ball though, you don't have to get a shot there. He put that, or she put that six ball in a great spot. Yep. She's looking at a kick. She's going to kick this. She's probably going to kick the 11 and call the 10 just in case it goes. How I, sick I like would this, this be shot. if she's going to kick at its 10 ball? I, I, I like this. I think she's going to, like, if you kick at the 10 directly. That's pretty sick. That's, now you're, uh, that's gambling. You need to come to Oneida. <laughs> give, give me and my tribe some money. Um, I'm kicking at the 11, which is much fatter, and you're going to kind of get the same thing anyways if it goes. 
Yeah, this is. What's this he is, saying? Yeah, uh, Derek's a fan of this. He's like, whoa, aggressive. Are they getting a referee for this show? <clears throat> uh, I mean, if you're going for the ten, it's it's worth. Yeah, that's right next to the five. It's a big game. Um. God, I... Again, I'm kicking at the ten. At the sorry, the eleven. Uh, so so well, my my question is though is if you're gonna try to hit the eleven ball, why not just shoot at it? Because she can see it. Oh, I'm saying because because you're still you're gonna it's the eleven's you're almost assured of a hit right because it's super yeah. fat, so you're sending the eleven to the hole and you're never gonna sell out. You're never gonna open the hole for the five. She shot your shot. That's my oh shot. Oh my god! Did she? Let's go. Did she call that? Oh. Oh my god. Five second rule. Five second rule. That would have been pretty sick because he had a sh he has a shot at the eleven too. Yeah, he yeah. Didn't see and it it, to it make leads it. to the shot to the eleven. I was I was kind of <laughs> thinking that she hit it perfect. Wow. She got robbed. And you didn't sell out nothing. You didn't. I mean, you might not like when you get back to the table, but that was way the shot. At, at worst, they're gonna have as the exact same <clears throat> shot. Did a shot. Yeah, that was a good call there, Ray. I don't think I would have shot that shot, but I liked your shot better than saying the bank hit to start with. I don't like kicking onto that ball because if you if you get in bad and hit two rails and catch that 11, you give a ball in hand if it don't get to a rail, you know. There's so much stuff that could be kicking at that 11 could happen, but she ginned it good. <laughs> but I still like your shot taking the chance to get out with the bank. So here, if you can, it's a little angle weird, a little weird. You can, oh. I think you can just make it roll up, not stun follow Kurt Elliott, a little bit of roll follow, and just leave the cue ball on top of the 11. And the hole's blocked with the 5. He might not have angle to do that, though. And if not, you can... Um, So if he can play the spy ball rail first into that 10, he can probably block that 11 maybe. I don't know how deep that is in there. I I think he got out of that pretty good. I was going to say, I like that. I like that. I think he's going to have a kick shot, but he there's no way he's getting out of there to get a good shot on the eight ball. I don't, I'd like to know if he could see that 11 ball. Because if he can see that 11 at all, he can... Probably get the cue ball onto the five and maybe block that six. Solids are in major control. Oh, now. So, yeah. Maria and Scott are definitely in trouble. Unless, unless a crazy shot comes off here. You might have to go for this. T two rails, two rails in the corner, pass the two. Speed it to the pocket. I think you have to go. Do you for think this. it kicks in uh, off the five or and then just take your medicine and bank the eight? It's close. I I don't think it kicks in. Yeah, but if but even if it doesn't kick in, you, you're going to dominate the pocket. Uh, there's good things can happen there. Kick it at the right speed. At best, you leave it with <clears> that <throat> six ball in the side pocket. Really. I like I like the two railer. So if you speed the two railer to the hole, and you hit it short. It's gonna it's gonna muddy up this two ball. If you hit it long, it's gonna muddy up this two ball. Are you trying to draw the five ball in then? No, I'm no. I don't think you have the angle for that as well. If you have the angle for both, then yes. But I'm more concerned about speeding it. I'm trying to make it. But if I miss it, either block the hole or freeze on the two. Yep. He likes my shot. This game is so easy from the booth. <laughs> Never missed the ball in here, right? So easy. Scratch on a break once, maybe? I actually don't want to make this. Look at this speed. Oh, so I put it right on the oh. two. Right on the two, like so. God. That was great speed. It almost looked like he was going to clip Andy, that eight ball Andy and make made it. The five. I didn't know he had the angle to do that. Did he? Did that cue ball? Oh, I wish I had a uh, replay. He might have not had the angle, created it with the hop. 
You oh, saw how yeah. it hopped because it was close and he was jacked? That would be a, <laughs> make a nasty shot if that's what happened. And I tell you what, man, this match here would drain me. They have to go on and shoot another match like you were talking about earlier. Well, here's another good shot. They're going to probably play, try to stick him on the seven ball kind of him. She's going to probably have to kick two rails at this ball. Ooh, be careful. I think she's just putting a seven in that pack. I was going to say. That's, that's, not, that's not horrible. That's. I would have liked to try to slow roll a little more, try to maybe get in between the seven and the rail. Um, at least force them to kick two rails at this. I like getting. I would assume they can make that the... ball with ball in hand if they did get ball in hand. It's close. It's probably close, huh? You know what happens when you assume? Make an ass out of you and me. Make an ass out of you <laughs> and Kurt Elliott. <laughs> uh, now, we appreciate you, Kurt. Thanks for ch chiming up. You're giving, you're giving us a target. He wasn't such a bum, he'd we be did. up here already instead of waiting until tomorrow. Everyone's here. There's gamblers, there's pool players, there's tables open today. I, I was shocked yesterday. Usually the first day there's... Well, the teams don't start till 6 o'clock tonight. Or 6 o'clock tonight, yeah. It's the first match in the Bs. It's kind of a weird schedule this, this year for teams. Being Easter on Sunday, they want to get everything done by the huh, Saturday. That is weird, yeah. Pool, pool is my religion. I mean, Easter, it, it, yeah. I would have never known it was Easter until yeah. How good I she found out this. about this. How good did she hit that? Oh, my God. I, I'm i casting my vote for MVP of this match right now. I've only seen half of it. Yeah, but it's, Maria's she's hitting all the shots. Some shots. Maria's a great player, though. <laughs> I don't think she could have hit that any better. So two shots ago, we were just saying Solids is in major control, and I was going to put a number on it. I was going to say something like 95% chance to win this game. Uh, Solids is no longer 95% chance to win this game. See, now here I think he's going to just, like, try to cross-face this and maybe come off the bottom rail and try to get back on the bottom of the ball maybe. Yeah, anything down here is fine. The, the, the worst thing you can sell out is a back cut to the far opposite corner. He's been hitting some pretty good. I Oh, God. He hit that perfect. I don't even know if they, she, I don't even think they, he's going to have to kick at that ball. And I think the eight ball blocks it. Um, Here, I kind of like just. Banking that eight ball into that pack, making a making a. That's probably not a bad shot. Creating a flux capacitor triangle over there. Even if he can see the edge, I mean that's that's going to come close to the side pocket for a scratch, I would think. There again, guys, you gotta you also gotta remember we're looking at this match the exact same way you are, so. We are not even seeing the actual table. He's saying, bank, uh, Kurt says, bank the eight up by the seven. I don't like that. Um, I don't, I don't mind it. I mean, it's not a bad like, shot as long as you get it on above the seven. If you, if you can, if you're confident in putting it, just going to put the cue ball right behind there and just leave them stuck on the two ball now. I don't like that. Uh -huh. just, I don't. I don't like that shot. Yeah, that was Maria. Maria's scolding him right now. Yeah, she's like, "What the hell?" I was out from there. What, what are we doing? What are we waiting for? I think she just plays the two eleven up table and just leaves him right on that two ball, probably, huh? I mean, you got a thousand shots here. It's it's. Uh... <laughs> or how confident are you? Of Shooting that six ball down into the eleven two and freezing them on the back of the seven. Yeah, that's what that's my shot. I'm shooting the six down here, getting a soldier in the game, a pawn, maybe even breaking it out and putting the cue ball behind the seven. Uh what in the world is going on here? 
Okay, right now I'm call, I'm yelling, coach. I'm throwing. I'm taking a red flag out of my back, <laughs> out of my ankle, out of my sock, and throwing it under the center of the pool table. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, why are you eating? I think if these I'm tips. Sh- I think if I'm shooting potatoes, singles, I shoot this shot and play it safe on the on the deuce. Playing scotch, I don't know if I'd mess with it. I mean, this opens up the table, obviously, but Just better hope that two ball stays right there with that cue ball, though. Better hope you get a rail. There's a, there's a couple things here that you you have such a huge advantage here. I don't like the risk of this. She got the rail. She got the rail. Uh, I think no. there's just gonna be a jump shot. I think she jump. might be able to see this ball. I don't think so, but. You like jumping this, or you like kicking this down and back Definitely down? Definitely a jump shot. Yeah. And that's what she's doing. She's going for her jump cue right now. She's getting it out. She is going to jump it. Um. So you still have advantage, but you're playing a grind match. That was like a that was like a shot for. A, for I would say if you're not ready to grind. That was like, let me open this table up and if you make a jump you win. I don't even want to give you a jump. I had way I have I have I have way too much positional advantage. I don't think she leaves a jump though if if she's playing to hit the eleven on the rail, but she kinda of played both balls, the one to go to the rail and then she tried to draw the cue ball back to the rail. If she plays more like a stun stop shot. Then it takes a jump shot out. That's what Kurt was saying in the chat. He said too much draw, not enough stop. <laughs> Um, I mean, this is, this is, this is definitely the game right here. If she makes or misses, she makes it, they probably win. If she misses it, they're going to lose. And it's not much of a jump. You only got to get over what? Half a ball. Yeah. And it's, and it's kind of natural shape to get back down table for, for some kind of shot on the eight. This is uh, I'm I'm putting stripes right now at at uh thirty percent to win this game, which is way higher than they were one shot ago. Well, that's gonna happen here. Jesus, still got the same theory. <laughs> stripes, uh, Just might gotta... still be thirty percent to win this game. Probably a little lower, but but I don't know. Well, there, so there's there's one also one aspect of. Are you shooting this six ball? No, Top right. Sorry. No, no, ma'am. <laughs> no, thank you. No, no. Again, when you get in these grind out matches, this is that's where you lose your nerve and you're like, all right, I, yeah, I can make this six. You just played fifteen innings. Like, you want to fire a ball in now? A sellout. <coughs> Um, some people do. I mean, that's a, no, that's not me. I don't, I don't think there's a real obvious safe here, though, is there? Can't see the seven ball. I'm, I'm just rolling the cue ball on, to, on, to, on top of the 11. Yeah. They've been, they've been getting into a lot of weird games. This is, this, this game here has went back and forth like. 70, 80 percent of both both groups back and forth. This is a knockdown drag out, and nobody's really doing anything wrong. It's just Maria's the only one that's hitting the right hitting. He did go for it. That's well, that's the that's an ender. That's that's gonna be it right there. Looks like that's gonna put Maria and Scott on the hill, barring anything dumb happening. <laughs> that was insanity to me. There, I mean, uh, me personally, I didn't see much else to do but to cut that six ball. I think he hit it a little hard, but I mean, you just bump the two and leave the cue right on the eleven. Any, anywhere on this side of the 11, there's, there's nothing to do. I mean, they're going to play a safe back at you. But I take that over this. I mean, obviously, yeah. you could have made it. But 
Look at this. He's going to be behind oh, it. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh. Whoa. 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 That was too sp- <laughs> Yeah, a chance to get right behind that, too. Can you imagine having to walk back to Maria? She, he would have hooked her behind that two ball. All right, so here's a shot. This is the ball. This probably shot right here skids on me more than anything. This this shot. How do you hit this ball to make it not skid? You hit a little bit of left, a little bit of outside. I'm just I, hitting straight top. See, I'm definitely rolling it. She hit that a lot harder than what I would have, but that's just where everybody's preference comes into play. But yeah, you're right. You get those balls like that, and you got to hit them with top English or something. It's they skid a lot. That's pretty. That's the only Did way. Did you have any balls game. skidding at all in no. this tournament? No, no, no. The conditions are great. We yeah. got diamond tables. We got awesome lighting. We got Mad Apple streaming. We got it all. I think that's... Kendall's giving us uh, gift certificates for free steaks at the Kendall. Mad Apple. Kendall's back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, how did you get that, re that replay button, too? F10. F10. There was a couple shots that came up we were going to replay, but we couldn't figure it out. Oops, sorry. Sorry, guys. Oh, that was close. We almost missed the rest of the match. That's, <laughs> yeah. He, was, he might have missed the whole game just now. Look at this break. No, He's broke the ball solid. That cue ball's in the center of the table. That's an easy run out there. Okay. I can kind of see it, yeah. Table, table. So this is table one, and table two is about to start a finals. Okay. We got more action. Is table two going to be the men's, or that's got to be right? I see Knight Mindem over there. Yeah. Nate. <clears throat> yeah. Spells his lame. Nate Mindem. <laughs> spells his lame name. Yeah, it's like going to be uh, Nate Mindham and uh, his partner, which is uh, Nate's nephew, 16 years old, playing against uh, Justin and uh, Russ. Oh, wow. That's a good, good. Uh... Justin and Russ happen to be uh, double dipped. Look at this first shot here on the rail, straight in. I hate this shot. Yeah. I'm not the only one. Yeah, this is uh, not good. And, and, your, and uh, the table's wide open. That was yeah. a lot of pressure on that shot. What else are you going to shoot, though? Maybe the three ball on the side? A little easier, maybe? I mean, I was looking at the four. I thought the four was, I mean, it wasn't easy. Nothing was easy, but. Yeah. It's pretty hard to take. You get a great break like that, and then you end up on the bottom rail and can't <laughs> see a ball. Either that or you're pinned on the bottom of a ball or. How often does that happen? A lot. Kurt Elliott's leaving. Michael Lagu is here. Riley wants to know who you are. Who are our announcers? Well, Riley, I am Jeff Potts, and I am in here with uh, Ray Skinnador, the People's Champ. Hey. AKA and, and Ray he, South Strip. AKA. And he's looking for chest action if you're here. I, I like to gamble. I'm not familiar with your name, right? Where are you from, Riley? It'd be interesting to see how many, where all these guys are out, of, out from. Kurt, you know you don't have to work, so. You might as well just leave and come to Wausau right now. Kurt says, Ray, come back. To Beloit with a couple stacks soon. Be 
Triple Team. champ. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Here's Michael. Team Hippo. Did you guys yeah. ever get that match going that you guys were trying to get? It's still in the works. Uh, it's so hard to get 10 guys together that can play at the same time. Yep. So he's from Missouri. Yep. When it happens, though, we got a good sponsor, Mike Lagoo's manager down at the Peppermint Hippo. And they do support pool players, and I support them. Yeah, they uh, – you always see the Team Hippo. You know, they're always saying something and go to after parties there and probably can't go wrong there, huh? I mean – Okay. Okay. Don't worry about the guitar coming in. Or the pedals. I'll do the black one. Okay. Okay. I think Maria and, uh, I think Maria, Team Maria is out of here, out right now. I mean, the table's wide open. They're, they're taking their time because you, you're in a grind out match. That all of a sudden you get a wide open table on the, and you can run out on the hill. I mean, you're supposed to slow yourself down because it's just too easy to just fire a ball in with no regard. And I know, and, and Maria's a smart player too. I I guarantee when this match is done, she's taking at least a 15 minute break. She will not jump right into the next match. Wait a minute, they're coaching right now. Yeah. I see Maria's hands on her hips. She is scolding her teammate again. What's going on here? I really don't think there's really an option unless he's trying to say he wants to play shape, maybe to shoot that seven in the side off this four ball, maybe to spin up two rails or come up one rail for it. What seven, do you like? I, I, I think mean, he got a draw over for the two ball. I, I can't shoot it now. He looked at it like he was going to. Yeah, I'm shooting the four, drawing one rail for the two. You might even get perfect for the seven in the far corner. But, yeah, uh, I like that get, shot. You want to get closer to the rail he, than he is now? Perfect. This is going to be perfect. She'll draw this right back for the side pocket. And if she draws too far, he's got it in the corner. Can't really go wrong here unless he actually stopped the ball. That was a good shot, yeah. You just you just wanted to be a little closer to the rail than he was, and, he, and he's, yeah. he's much closer he's now. He's pointing now, and she can get – yeah, she knows it. <clears throat> she can draw all the way down to the 13, and he's still got a shot. I'll tell you what, though. You are jacked up, so the line of your cue is going to be over this 13. You're not jacked up much. No. But when you're trying to do a control draw, all of a sudden, guess what happens? You stop the ball. It's, <laughs> it just stops. It doesn't draw at all, and you don't know what happened. You're like, wait, what? What? Well, it's because it create you, you create you created a little bit of elevation, which creates a little bit of hop, which kills your stunt. Okay, never mind. She yeah, hits it perfect. Perfect. Ginned it. There you go. Like you were saying before, Maria's Maria's definitely played the best shots out of the. She's been rock solid pretty much this whole match. Well, Riley, we uh we appreciate you tuning back in and watching the Mad Apple stream. Uh, Kendall obviously over at the Mad Apple does a real good job with this stream. They got. One of the better streams. It's got a lot of time and money in doing this. Oh my god! Every every time I come in here, I see like new switchboards and cameras and just upgrades all over the place. Yeah, does not look cheap. So Scott's looking at this like he's got a weird angle that he's going away from this. What do you just try to stun this? Maybe you got Maria shooting after you. I don't like this. So you got nothing. He's to going to the end rail. What? He's gonna go to the end rail. I I think you gotta stun into the twelve ball, don't you? Or the fifteen, whatever that twelve ball, ten. That's fine. You could do that. Yeah, nothing. There's nothing. He nothing was, bad happens. Oh, now he looks like he's changing it. He was pointing to the end rail. He was gonna go to the end rail. There you go. I like that shot. At that speed, you can't get hooked or anything. He goes to the end rail, and you never know what's gonna happen from there. Well, this eight ball here will uh, move uh, Maria and Scott on to the third place match. 
And after this match here, I think uh, Ray and I will probably be taking a little break because they're going to do uh, try to do a little update, aren't they? Is that? Uh, yeah, and they might. They're starting table. Well, maybe they're not. Looks like Nathan's yeah. I think away. Kendall said something about we weren't going to stream anything until like two o'clock. Oh, okay. They're going to take a break for the finals. Finals, probably. I guess uh, he said something about some Chris doing an update, so the computers were right. Boom shakalaka. Well, there you go. Maria and Scott move on. Uh, Ray and I are going to take a little break here. We appreciate you guys tuning in, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. It was good uh, talking with you, Ray. Yeah, you too. Good, 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 good stuff, man. We're coming back at 2 o'clock. That puts Maria in the uh, team Maria in the final three, I believe. I saw first place pays a thousand. That's all I look at when I get any tournament. I don't want to know what second pays. I don't want to know what eighth or sixteenth. I want to, what's first pay. Tell me that, and now I have the full motivation to play my best, hopefully, and. Uh, I know I know this tournament pays a thousand for first. I was in it to win it. I didn't get there. But uh man, I got my pick to win this tournament and it is Team Maria. Alright, we'll let you go. Yeah, there's gonna do an update. There's no matches going on table one or two right now. Uh so we'll see you back about two o'clock. Out.
scenario either double or maybe not be encouraged in table, or someone would decide to take a spread off of one of them, right? On the spread and they decide. At the time you get the eight ball, I'm going to catch it. And then it'll be much longer around here. Anybody have any information? See anybody taking balls? Anybody know?
check how's it going guys just making sure you're still there uh we're back here i'm gonna be going to a split screen we got another uh match going on that we want to get on the stream so bear with us here as we take it side by side uh, it'll be a couple minutes because honestly we had some technical problems but uh pretty quick here we're going to be going to two table coverage Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you.
All right, so that's it uh, for the Masters um, Scotch Double. And uh, we have to go off air here for a second so we can fix a couple of things, and then uh, we'll be back. And there's uh, another match, championship match going on on Pit 2. Uh, we'll go to that as soon as we get back. <laughs> 